Hey guys, what's up? Ardu! Yeah, we're back again and we're coming in hot! Welcome to another video of me crying and yes, it's another Farina video because I haven't made any in 3 weeks. In today's video, we'll be talking about the importance of crying, the tears that were shed all throughout Fontaine's history, and what these tears mean for Fontaine once 2.4 comes out. Timestamps down in the description, so let's just jump right in. If you've played the 4.1 quest, you'll notice Forina showing a different side of herself in both the Archon quest and Nouvellet's character quest. Key points being her letter to Nouvellet, her behavior during and after her heated debate, as well as her near-death experience with Arlecchino. But we're not here to talk about that. If you're curious to know about her possible two personalities, then you can watch this video instead. But back on topic, Forina might actually be the first Oceanid created by Egeria. This I can maybe connect with something that happened long long ago but is mentioned to possibly be untrue a tale a legend a story passed down through generations upon generations of both oceanids vishaps and humans which are beings in genshin's lore that are chock full of mystery already if you haven't gotten it yet the wind gladders of fontaine talk about what seemed like the primordial sea the first hydro dragon egeria and fontaine's history now we also have mentions of celestia's first envoy as well as the Kingdom of Remoria and King Remus, but we'll talk about that in a different video. To understand what Egeria did and what Farina and Nouvellet's real mission is, based on what Egeria wants, we must first talk about where everything in Tavat came from, the Primordial Sea. The Primordial Sea creates life, but it also takes life. The purest form of quote-unquote water in all of Fontaine that is toxic and deadly to all Fontanians. But was this creating and taking life always the case. The primeval water was said to have similar composition to blood, and life within these waters were not of a single entity but of multiple ones. And the heart of this teeming life within that primordial sea of blood was the first hydro dragon. Every pulse of his heart, its blood or life would give praise, akin to a beating heart of an entire watery body. This was the tale that Hydro Vishaps told each other, one that is only known to Vishaps themselves. Another tale speaks of Egeria and the first Oceanid's creation that happened after the Vishaps. We have two excerpts from which Oceanid's origins come from, and both tell a similar tale. From the same wind glider of Fontaine, wings of merciful, wrathful waters, Egeria was first created after the fall of the seven sovereign dragon lords. This was after the heaven war between the primordial one and the sovereigns. Of those sovereigns, the first heart was removed, likely pertaining to the heart of the Hydro Dragon or the Hydro Dragon itself who was inside the primordial sea. The envoy of Celestia that was responsible for creating life then created another heart. This heart had draconic nobility as well as the majesty of gods, but was created by human rulers and it not only lacked a physical form but also lacked a divine duty. This I think is a nod to a frame god or Deotiosi, which is one of the many titles of the Roman goddess Diana, who I mentioned is synonymous with Lucina or in Genshin's case, Lucine. We'll go back to Lucina in a bit, but these are gods without practical purpose, with transcendent powers and refusing to rule in worldly matters, which if you look at both Egeria's past rule and Forina's current rule, it was never about completely ruling humanity, but was more about guiding and understanding them, communicating with them. Egeria was called the noble navigator, not the ruler of Fontaine. And right now, Forina isn't exactly ruling Fontaine either, and is being pressured by Arlecchino on her duty as the Archon. But based on Egeria's lore from the Wind Glider and the excerpts from Fontaine's Institute of Natural Philosophy, Egeria's purpose was never to rule humans. Or at least that's what she intended after her creation. We have known since the previous patches that the previous Hydro Archon wanted to connect the world like water through her oceanids. And we know now from these two bits of lore that she still intends to do that. But she's not technically there. 
The creation of Egeria was a mix of both substances from Tevat and creation by the ruler of humanity. Egeria was the first creation of Celestia and the Sovereigns that completely contradicted everything about herself. Which we can see from the environment of Fontaine, the Numa Osha, and from Farina herself, her heterochromia, and her personality. It's been theorized that she might have both Numa Osha in her kit, but if Egeria in her lore was created with both both the sovereigns of Tevat and invaders or usurpers in mind, then it's more likely that that's the case. And even more so for Numa and Osha separately. Numa, possibly of celestial origin, left in Fontaine after the Heavenly War, and Osha as remnants of the primordial blood left by the primordial sea of the first Hydro Dragon, which is the heart of the sea. From what I could understand, Egeria was created by the celestial envoy whose duty was to create life, the shade or envoy of life. And she was then placed in the primeval sea after removing the first heart that was the first hydro dragon. And Egeria was the result of that heavenly war, as mentioned in the Wind Glider of Fontaine. Meaning Egeria could be the oldest god before Zhong Li was even created. But, and this is a big but, after her creation, she had a glaring problem with having no clear purpose. She was created by the ruler of humans, Celestia, but was created in place of the Hydro Dragon, the Sovereigns. Now, what do you think she did? Well, she created the Oceanids. Because of her godly power but lack of form and divine duty, as well as her creation after the fall of the dragons and the creation of humans, she cried onto the primordial sea where she was placed. This I want to guess is her crying in the fountain of Lucene and where her emotions ended up after the heavenly war and her creation. Her being lonely would fit Egeria after her creation since almost nothing was left after that heavenly war. But from what I understand, the fountain is voiced by Farina's voice actor and not Egeria's. But who knows, maybe they made it sound similar to each other for the context like in Sumeru but not explicitly or I'm just losing my mind. Anyway, Egeria as the new heart shed tears into the primordial sea because, well, she was there. And the primordial sea was mixed with her celestial tears. Excerpts from both the Wind Glider and the Institute of Philosophy say that it was either her compassion or sympathy for the dragons' loss and the humans' sad fate. What happened next is the creation of the first Oceanid from her first tear. Because of this, it's said that she also committed all the sins that the beings of pure water, i.e. the Hydro Dragons, must be aware of. Here's a quote about Egeria and the first tear. The lizard's bones dissolved into mud, from which swans emerged. This could be the first ever Oceanid in all of Tevat, or this could be two separate creations of Egeria, one from her own tears and the other from the Hydro Dragon's corpse. And Egeria created them to instill the warning and sin that all pure beings must be aware of, having powers of metamorphosis and with the mission to understand and communicate with all beings in Tevat. A mission that Egeria so wanted after her creation without purpose. And wouldn't you know, a certain dragon of water and an archon is working towards that same goal. You who were born with original sin, go forth and search for the long buried truth before all is lost beneath the waves. Crying into the sea of life with tears of celestial origin could be the original sin of which the primordial sea that once breathed life into the world now takes back life. All the sins that Egeria committed were taught as a warning to the first Oceanid born from her tears and the lizard's bones that turned into a swan that emerged from the sea of life. Yes, Novolet is the dragon of water, I know. But wouldn't it be interesting if Egeria, after being given the Gnosis, the shard of the first Hydro Dragon, used it to recreate that Hydro Dragon again and with metamorphosis created it to look like a human and then left a shard of herself to watch over Fontaine in the form of Farina to guide both Nouvellet and Fontaine as its navigator. A Hydro Dragon born from Egeria who was created through the heart of the first Hydro Dragon, the Gnosis. 
and a remaining shard of Egeria cursed and unable to guide Fontaine. The shard of the perfect divine abomination and the true Hydro Sovereign left to take care of Fontaine. Or maybe, Egeria's tears in the Primordial Sea created Forina as the first Oceanid. And with the Gnosis given to Egeria, she also recreated the Hydro Dragon at that same time lakes, thereby making Forina and Nuvolet actual siblings and offsprings of Egeria, one from her own tears and the other from the heart of the first Hydro Dragon. This could explain the three seats in Fontaine too. Tears were always a hint since we came to Fontaine. Seen in Egeria's lore, Nuvolet and Forina's design, Forina crying as well as the tears and emotions in the Fountain of Lucene, and even the most recent event, Calero. Kalirho, who became one of the waters of Springvale, dubbed the Heart of Springvale. And now we have Egeria becoming one and is now the new gentle heart of the Primordial Sea, of which we have our goofy Harbinger child in that Primordial Soup and catching a glimpse of what seemed like a whale from his dreams. This whale, I hazard a guess, is Egeria, who replaced the Hydro Dragon's position as the heart of the Primordial Blood, and one that I think will meet and speak to in the near future. That leaves us with her possible creations, Farina and Nuvolet, the first tier of Egeria, as well as the recreated Dragon of Water, both with a mission to save Fontaine through the idea of justice and sin planned by Egeria, which points us to the Oratrice and Indemnitium, which is also created by the Hydro Archon and is also where I think the Gnosis could be. The harvested belief of justice or rather, the accumulated sin of humanity that may or may not be the deterrent to Fontaine's crisis. Indemnity means compensated debt for a committed damage or loss. That damage is either Egeria and her celestial slash sovereign tears mixed up in the primordial sea or the sin of humanity long ago, the desire to rule themselves. And because the Oratress is created by the Hydro Archon, it's possible that the Gnosis is also there, being fed the sins of humanity, preparing to pay a long-made debt. And it's almost time to pay back that debt with a bit of interest. A debt that's been slowly building up for thousands of years since humans were first created. But we can only wait till 4.2 when that debt is finally paid. Quick tangent since we're basically done with the video. Tears and Genshin have not only been prominent in Fontaine, but we've already seen droplets since the Gnostic Chorus, the Volin's Tear, the ripple effect in both of Venti's teasers, Rain from A's teaser and trailer, and if we go a bit crazy, metaphorically speaking, shards like the Gnosis could also be tears. And the branches of the spirit tree in the king's mansion from before the sun and moon could also be thought of as tears or droplets of a bigger entity. Now I think that Fontaine is the hub of where most of missing lore will be found. Something Venti's tales would likely be related to since his tales and poems go back all the way to the creation myths of Tevat. And maybe even Zhongli's dragon origins could be written in Egeria's or in Fontaine's lore. A deeper story of Tevat that even the early human soul doesn't know and can only record and be changed by unknown third entities, likely Celestia. End of tangent. And there we go, the tears of Fontaine and an in-depth theory on how Fontaine's past might have been and what might happen based on those lore bits about Fontaine. Ah, oh, it's good to be back, guys. I've been sitting on that video since before the Calero event and it's kind of been made clear with the new wings as well. We only have a handful of days left until 4.2 special program comes and after that, the 4.2 patch itself will finally release. I saved up enough for a guarantee and possibly C2. So here's to Farina's plans, Nuvolet's justice, and Child's whale, which is possibly all the same thing. Egeria. So I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like on if you enjoyed, subscribe, and hit the bell for more of my ramblings, and uh, I can't believe I'm gonna say this again. Stay mad, theorists. Bye!